Now, after a marathon summit, EU leaders struck a deal on a pandemic recovery fund and an EU budget deal. But now there's another hurdle. The final package must pass the European Parliament and some MEPs, including the Budget Committee, are insisting the deal cannot be passed in its current form. Well, joining us fresh from the debate in Parliament is the Belgian MEP and former Prime Minister Guy Verhofstadt. Thanks for your time today. Do you think this deal should go through given the difficulty in getting to this stage already? Uh, this deal will go through, uh, but uh, it will be naturally also uh, reformed, uh, the deal, in, in, in the way that uh, more pan-European uh, projects uh, will be uh, come in top priority of uh, the, this recovery fund. And, 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 and secondly, uh, it's absolutely necessary that the European Parliament, the European democracy, has a full oversight on this uh, 750 billion recovery fund. That said, it's an enormous step forward, a 750 billion uh, recovery fund uh, based on uh, bonds issued by the European Union and paid back by new own resources. I, I call it a, a yeah, a Hamiltonian uh, moment uh, for the European Union. Some, some were concerned that um, too many concessions were given to the so-called frugal for the Netherlands, Denmark, yeah. Sweden and Austria. That, that's true, uh, but, but that's the consequence of uh, the rule of unanimity. You know, the, the, the basic rule uh, to adopt uh, such a recovery fund and the multi-annual financial framework, the budget of the European Union, is unanimity. If you have the unanimity as the basic principle, then every country can ask for a rebate, as Britain did in the past, as you know, uh, or ask for, for more funding, more transfers. Uh, and so the, the main lesson from the exercise uh, of, uh, of last week uh, is that that we need to uh, abolish in the future uh, this unanimity uh, rule. Uh, a, a modern organization like the European Union uh, cannot be efficient, cannot be effective on the world stage if we continue to use uh, the unanimity rule as the basic principle for decision making. The, um, the, the question of Hungary and Poland, of course, is still controversial. Mm -hmm. They um, potentially might have uh, vetoed any deal if it was conditional on the so-called rule of law provision. Um, this is just going to be an ongoing political divide, isn't it? It's very, very difficult. That's true, uh, but I think there is a breakthrough also in this uh, because uh, one of the conclusions of the European Council, uh, firmly backed by the European Parliament, is that a, a new system uh, will be proposed by the European Commission and will be put in place uh, next year uh, with conditionality. That means that uh, European money or money of this uh, European Recovery Fund can only uh, go uh, to uh, countries who are fully in respect with rule of law, with human rights, and uh, with uh, democracy. And there are some doubts about the true uh, Hungary and, 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 and Poland. And this will be decided by, uh, not unanimity, this will be decided by a qualified uh, uh, majority. So we are waiting now for the concrete proposal of the European Commission. And if there is a qualified majority for that in the uh, uh, European uh, Council, and I have no doubt that, that, uh, that uh, a qualified majority exists in the Council, then we can uh, go forward also with that important uh, uh, fight. Isn't that a, a slightly feeble response to, to the changes that we've seen in Hungary and Poland? Some people might feel that it should be expelled. I mean, would they have got membership now, for example, if they were trying? Yeah, but un until now, until now, based on Article 7 of uh, the treaties, the only way uh, to tackle the problem uh, was uh, to uh, discuss it uh, in the European Council and to take a unanimous uh, decision. And <laughs> that is uh, quite impossible, uh, because on the case of Hungary, Poland would veto a decision, and on the case of Poland, Hungary would veto a decision. For, for, for that reason, uh, yeah, the, that was, uh, there was a deadlock uh, around uh, that, uh, that problem. So I'm very pleased now that there is an agreement uh, uh, to ask to the European Commission to come forward with an, a new uh, piece of legislation uh, that will be decided not by unanimity, that will be decided by qualified uh, majority and uh, that really can lead to sanctions uh, in countries uh, who are not fulfilling or not applying uh, the rule of law. That said, the money will still go to that 
country, but directly to the people, directly to local communities, directly to non-governmental organizations, and not longer uh, to uh, the government uh, uh, organizations who are responsible for the breach of, uh, 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 of rule of law. OK, if we can just quickly move on to Brexit, because, of course, um, talks have been ongoing. The UK government has said it is not going to extend any kind of deadline. Do you think there is going to be a deal? Uh, a, a, a deal on Brexit, I, I, I hope I think it's in the interest of both uh, of the European Union, and it is certainly in uh, the interest of uh, uh, Britain uh, to uh, have a, a, an agreement, uh, because otherwise that, 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 that will be for the British economy, I think, and the British industry, uh, yeah, a, a disaster uh, to, uh, to have next year nothing at all anymore, not longer the single market, uh, the uh, reinstallation of the, uh, yeah, all the uh, bureaucracy at, our, at, at the borders. So I, I hope for both, for the European Union, but certainly for uh, my British friends that, 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 that there is an agreement. But for that, I, I think uh, what I see, because uh, uh, it, it is absolutely necessary that uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson, the Prime Minister of Britain, accepts uh, that you can not be out of the uh, European Union and have all the benefits of the European Union. That is not possible. Uh, it will be necessary uh, to, if, they, if, if Britain wants to have the advantages uh, of uh, the single market also, to apply the rules of the single market. And, and just finally, uh, we, we saw um, a British report on Russia, obviously, this week on potential Russian interference. Um, yeah. What did you make of that? The only thing what I uh, have concluded from that uh, report uh, that has been published very late uh, is that yeah, there was no serious uh, inquiry uh, by the British uh, government and by the British authorities uh, in uh, the uh, Russian interference. Uh, I have no doubt. I think there was uh, Russian uh, interference. There was a Russian interference. Uh, there is already Russian interference in our politics in, 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 in many countries in Europe and in the US for, for many years. That's, that's simply the strategy uh, of Mr. Uh, Putin. And it's, it, it's quite shocking uh, that uh, a, a government uh, is not willing to, in, uh, to inquire in that, to look uh, to in that. And, and really, you have to shut its, uh, its eye down uh, on it. Who do you blame specifically for that? Sorry? Who do you blame then for that? Well, bl blame that. That's a question that has to be uh, <laughs> answered in British politics. That's not uh, uh, we here in the, in, in, uh, in, in the European Parliament who have to uh, answer that question. And I think it's a good question uh, to put uh, uh, to, the, uh, yeah, to the British politicians and the British Parliament. Guy Verhofstadt, many thanks indeed for your time today. Thank you.